we're going to talk about uh, self harass now. We're going to talk about self harass specifically with an ice axe. Uh, and a quick note here. So this is one of the sexy things to do as a mountaineer. Everybody loves to use an ice axe. Everyone loves to practice self harass. But not very many people like to practice walking because walking uphill in snow is really tiring. But if you are using self arrest uh, and not team arrest, which is different, team arrest is when you are tied to other people and you are stopping their fall, but if you're using self arrest to stop yourself, then you've already messed up and you could use some more practice just walking in snow. So keep in mind, what I'm about to show should not be the focus of your mountaineering training. You should practice a lot of uphill and downhill walking in snow using your alpine boots as tools or your crampons as tools to gain purchase in the snow pack. Now should you need to use your axe for self arrest, not team arrest, I prefer to have the pick facing forward when I'm going up slope because if I slip and fall immediately without even thinking about it, the pick of my axe goes into the slope. By having a nice short axe, the pick of my axe ends up going into the slope close to my hip, which provides a very large amount of leverage for me to prevent going down the slope, and a huge handle to provide friction. I can then kick my feet back in and get back up. So let's just see that once again. This may not be the style of self arrest most people are used to. So as I ascend the slope, this is a very shallow slope, and an ice axe would not be needed for this slope. As I ascend, should I encounter patch of hard ice, I fall and immediately the pick of my ice axe enters the slope and stops me from sliding further. You can see this is not the ideal way to use the axe, but even under a little bit of momentum, rolling over and putting the axe into the slope in that position works very effectively and stops you much more immediately than the classic position for self arrest where should I fall now and I slide, it's going to take me some time in order to get control and get myself up and over my axe. Okay? So now let's talk about classic self arrest which is typically the pick is facing backwards or I have a force on my harness from team arrest and my, my party, my partners start to pull me and I can no longer hold with position alone and so I rotate in to classic self arrest. Now I'm going to show from pick backwards because that's the way many people are used to performing self arrest. From the pick facing backwards or behind me, I'm going to raise the axe up so that the shaft of the axe comes diagonally across my chest, pointing down toward my hip, with the adz tool, which is a triangular part at the top of the head there, coming up into this opening above my shoulder. I'm gonna grab down, I have a pretty short axe, so I grab down and it ends up covering the spike here. With a longer axe, I may end up grabbing above the spike. Here, by grabbing right at the spike with my short axe, it covers it and makes it a little safer should I roll over the ice axe. And from this position, from raising it up to here, I'm going to turn my head and tuck it into the shoulder that's opposite the head of the axe. So the other component of the self arrest is the roll. Now if I'm only arresting myself, I'm doing self arrest and not team arrest, then I have a choice of which way to the roll. I could roll to my left or I could roll to my right. Now, Given I have a choice and my direction of fall is in determining that I'm rolling in one direction, I prefer to roll toward the head of my axe. In this case, the head is in my right hand, so I'm going to roll toward my right, and that's for two reasons. The first is the distance of my head to the snowpack is less, so I'll be able to arrest faster, and the second reason is I won't have to roll over the spike of my axe. With, where, especially with a long axe, can become dangerous. So let me show you what I mean. So here, if I roll to my left, if this were a long axe, I would first encounter the spike here, which can bump me up and out, and then I end up in self arrest. By rolling to my right, or toward the head of the axe, I can avoid going over the spike, but there's a little bit more danger with the ads. Okay, you might find different instructors prefer one method over the other. 
Personally, I feel it's important that people learn how to do self-arrest both ways because a lot of times people who are doing self-arrest will also be on a rope team at some point. And if the rope team is running over your right hip, then you're going to be pulled that direction. If your team member should fall, you don't have a choice of which way to roll, okay? If you are the one who's falling, you don't know which direction that rope might be running over you, and so you don't really have a, a choice of which direction to roll. So I think it's important to practice both, but do be very mindful of these sharp points on the ax, because those can obviously be very dangerous to you. Notice I'm wearing a helmet, and I'm also wearing gloves, which are key pieces of protective equipment along with eyeglasses when I'm practicing self-arrest. So let's take a look at self-arrest from a seated position, rolling to my left and then, in, and then to my right. I'm gonna go through those same movements as I did when I was standing. I raise, and here I'm gonna roll to my left, even though I'm gonna go over the spike of my ax. And here, I'm going to go to my right. Just like when I was demonstrating self-arrest without an ice axe, the position is the same. My head turns away from the ads, up and away from the snow, looking down the slope for hazards, and I'm kicking my feet in. In this case, I'm not wearing crampons. Personally, when I'm guiding, I typically will kick in even with crampons if I'm performing team arrest and that's because if I get pulled off and the momentum is generated with other people attached to my rope, it could be very difficult if not impossible to stop my rope team on hard ice even if I'm leaning over my axe like this with my feet in the air. Here the only friction on the surface really of any consequence would be the pick of my ice axe and with two other people attached to me, the likelihood of stopping a fall is very low. I could slow the fall potentially, but in a lot of the terrain that I'm guiding, there can be rocks or more dangerously crevasses. And obviously I could injure my ankles, I could injure my foot, my leg, I could get flipped upside down by kicking in if there's any momentum generated. But the counter to that is it's much more dangerous for one or all of us to get pulled into a crevasse. So even with crampons on when I'm guiding I often do use my crampons as part of my um, self-arrest. If it's a relatively inconsequential slope there's not a big danger at the bottom like a crevasse then I may decide to slow the fall and then get established with my feet once my fall is slowed down. Okay, so I'll demonstrate both of those techniques right now. So the first way I'll demonstrate is if there's not consequential terrain in my fall line. Okay, and the next way I'm gonna demonstrate is the way I do things I'd say 90% of the time. Either I'm just arresting myself, so I want to—I can stop the small amount of force quickly, or I'm arresting a team and there's consequential terrain below us. And this way, that was rolling to the left, I'll do the same thing rolling to the right. However you decide to do it, obviously it's up to you, your sense of what's safe and unsafe, and you should pay attention to the type of terrain you're in, and the forces involved, whether you're just stopping yourself or you're stopping an entire team of people pulling you down the slope. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about self-arrest in different positions. So if you're lucky, you'll fall down on your back, you'll fall down on your butt, or you'll fall face first and down. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of times we can do stupid things like catch our inside of our pants with our crampons, snag a front point on the ice, and fall in a variety of different ways. And I can say if you work in the mountains long enough, recreate in the mountains long enough, sooner or later, you're probably gonna embarrass yourself in front of your friends um, and, uh, and your enemies. So uh, I'm gonna demonstrate a few different ways to perform self-arrest regardless of position. So one of the harder ways to perform self-arrest is head down. Whether you're head down on your back 
or on your front, doesn't matter. It can be less, much less intuitive. So I try to keep things as intuitive as possible when I'm teaching people. And what I tell people is, regardless of anything else, think about one thing. And that one thing is fling your feet downhill. Fling your feet downhill and then get into self-arrest position. By flinging your feet downhill, you transform your position very quickly. You can do that very elegantly by placing your axe in the snow as a fulcrum and then rotating around it. And that looks really good. And if you're really well practiced over and over and over again, you can do that pretty well. But just think, put your axe into the snow and fling your legs downhill tends to do the trick as well. Okay, I can do that with my left or my right hand, and those are the two thoughts I have. Axe into snow, fling my feet. Axe in the left hand. Now this particular slope we're working on today is not steep enough to realistically practice this technique. Unfortunately, we're a little limited today because COVID is happening, places aren't open, it's late May, so we're using the snow slopes we have. But ideally, choosing a slope that you'd identify as say, like a blue ski run, if you're start starting out, or even maybe the lower, lower angle portion of a black ski run, say between 35 and 40 degrees, which is also prime avalanche terrain. So if there is avalanche danger, make sure to stay out of that terrain. Typically in the spring is good though. So practice on steep terrain with a safe run out, meaning there's no rocks, there's no moats caused by creeks, um, and there's no crevasses, clearly. If you're practicing this, it's usually best not to practice this in glaciated terrain. Um, Make sure you have protected gear. And if you're just starting out, it's not a bad idea. Some people you'll see will put duct tape on the pick of their ax. You could put a pick protector on the end on the ads tool uh, just to get used to it. And then eventually it's a good idea to take those things off, especially if you're in the field. I think it's better to remove those materials. So in the event you really do need to do self arrest, you're guaranteed to get good purchase instead of making sure, instead of relying on the idea that the ice will tear those materials away. Okay, right now we're gonna talk a little bit about team arrest. And for the purposes of this video, you'll see we have two climbers. We're gonna reduce the distances between those two climbers uh, to keep them within the frame of the shot. And we're also not gonna have butterfly knots tied. So just remember that's for clarity. We're not demonstrating the way to rope up for two people for glacier travel, we're only gonna be demonstrating team arrest. And take a look at some of the key differences between trying to arrest a climber who's pulling on you versus trying to arrest yourself. You'll notice you're gonna have a rope traveling over one of your hips, and that's gonna determine the direction that you have to turn, whether your ax is in that hand or it's in the other hand. A quick note, typically when you're traveling across the slope, you wanna keep your ax in your uphill hand, but keep in mind when you're traveling straight up a slope or in its relatively flat glacial terrain with larger glaciers where the larger crevasses are, you may have your, your uh, ax in the left hand or the right hand relative to the rope and it's important to practice self-arrest regardless of the position. When you have a choice, I prefer to have my ax in the opposite hand as the hip that the rope is running over, and that way it will pull me toward my ax rather than away from my ax and out of self-arrest position. So a good thing to keep in mind. Two more, three. 
Come on now, come on, come on now, come on, get your hips up, hips up, hips up, hips up, come on. Good, okay, up, give me the last one. Chi. Yes, up. Good, good. Oh, nice, nice, come on, good. Okay.